Well, Shorty was a cop. And she ain't dead. Where'd y'all put the guns? She wasn't no cop, man. She looked like one of Orlando's hoes. Babe, where the fuck are the guns? What's up, y'all? This is Method Man, the host of The Wire at 20 podcast from HBO and Campside Media. If you liked the first episode, <laughs> you're going to love this. Now, normally, this podcast will be narrative with me in the driver's seat. And next week, we'll go back to hearing from lots of different voices. But for this episode, we're shaking things up, you heard? You'll hear me in conversations with someone who I go way back with. Hassan Johnson, who played Roland Weebe Bryce. I had no idea his first name was Roland. If y'all did, give me a holler. Our story began in Staten Island. I actually used to hang with his cousin when we were just kids. Shout out each B. I remember walking into his family's house and seeing Hassan, who was probably about 10 or 11 years old at the time, just sitting there playing with his race tracks, his cars. The kid was spoiled, you know? He even had that one that goes up the wall and comes back, you know what I'm talking about, Hot Wheels, racetracks. Yeah, a lot of people got ass whoopings with those. Anyway, years later, just by happenstance, our paths intersected in Baltimore on the set of The Wire. Now, Cheese was the character everyone loved to hate, especially after he betrayed his own uncle, Prop Joe, who was played by the late, great Robert Chu. But Weebay? <laughs> Talk about the exact opposite of Cheese. That cat was the epitome of loyalty. When he went down in season one, he took the rap for a pile of bodies to protect the Barksdale organization. He was already on the hook with the police, so uh, he decided to shield his people. That's a true soldier, a stone-cold killer who'd do anything for the team. Now, The Wire always had its audience, and it definitely had the street's attention right from the beginning. Hassan and I... We saw this firsthand. Our community was always behind us. And that was even before he was immortalized in one of the most famous memes of all time. Now, he's essentially in the Pop Culture Hall of Fame. So look, here are me and our song covering all the bases. Sorry if we're a little long-winded, but also, you're welcome. Hope y'all enjoy it. What's up, y'all? This is Hassan Johnson, and I play Roland Weebe Bryce seasons one through five. So look, we here, we here, y'all. <laughs> this is the podcast, and we have one of the biggest standouts on the series. Mm. My brother, A1 <laughs> since day one. That's right. Mr. Hassan, we bay, we call him Clock. All right. Johnson. What's up? What's up, man? What's up with you, family? Good. I feel great, man. Glad to be here. Thanks for having me, y'all. Well, it I don't short. think we could have this without you, honestly, because that 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 character alone, it was like if loyalty was a person, mm. a picture of Wee Bay would be there. It's a good analogy. For real. First thing is people want to know how do we know each other in the first time we met. First time we met, I don't know. You might remember that, that more was, than that I do. Was, it was, it was. I was I'm, a, I'm, I'm slightly older than my G right here. You know what I'm saying? I used to my hang with his bro, with his older cousin. That's right, H B Ryan Crab. H B, my family right there. Shout out to H uh, B, brother Rest Poppy, Kaim Mashing to the Bing Bing Bing, <laughs> Kaim Mashing to the Bing Bing Bing. 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 Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, wow. Well, you can tell we go way back. I mean, I'm talking about when this man here was, you know, like, not toddler, but like preteen. I was playing yeah. with his Transformers, his racetracks, all yeah, that. Yeah, Joe's. And uh, fun fact, part of the cream cadence came from a record that your dad had That's laying right. around the house that yeah. I peeped. He was big hip-hop head, yes. OG Ray. He absolutely, was. absolutely. He put me on. He bought them vinyls, man, from Beach Street a lot downtown. Yeah. Because he worked at Coney Island Hospital, so he'd go over there before he come home from work. Shout out to the OG That's Ray. Right. Facts. <laughs> um, another thing that they wanted to discuss is how we both appeared in Belly. Now, I honestly, they approached me to be in it. Hype came to me. But do you know, I don't even know, you gotta remember, 
I, when I auditioned, I was trying to get in there so bad. And yeah. what it was is Hype had an open audition, like Cloggers, like Spike did yeah. with Cloggers, yeah. right? Yeah. So I told myself, I'm not going to another open call. I'm going to get lost in the source. That's not going to work out right. like it did the first time. Right. I got to get through the door. Gano got me to drop on the audition. I went. Shout out Gano. Shout out Gano Grills. Yeah. I went. I did my thing. But now, I don't know if a lot of people remember behind the scenes, Jackie Brown was the original casting director for that. Uh, then it got switched to Winston St. Clair. Nice. She stepped up from, I think, Central Casting. There you go. So my tape got lost in that shuffle. I called up. I, mm, you know, back then, yeah, you could do that, yeah, man. You, yeah, we was, it was hungry. Easy. Yes, We yeah. was hungry. But Damn this is how the right. story go. This is how the story go, y'all. So I called up. I said, what's going on? I auditioned last week. I know I did my thing. They laughed. Whoever picked up the phone over there, Big Dog Films, because that was the production. <laughs> yeah. Shout out Hype Williams. Shout out Hype, Big Dog. He said, I right, calm down. <laughs> we checking tapes out. We'll call you back, Mr. Johnson. They called me back. Nice. I must have did my thing. They called me back. Long story short, I go in. Now, you know how they got the cast on the, on the board yeah, in there, right? Yeah, the wish pictures list, and all that, that right? yes, sir. As I remember it, Hype goes, no, you got the job. I just had to meet you. You know, your cousin, because he called yeah, you my cousin, yeah, yeah, yeah. said you came in and went crazy when you saw me. Absolutely. And told him, well, I'm not doing it unless Haas is in it. <laughs> I was like, that sound like, that sound like, that sound like about Ross. He did right. right. Yes, so I, got, yes, I had yes. to clear that out yes, for the, yes. clear that up for everybody. So there it goes right there. I mean, the whole belly uh, yeah, scenario, it. you know, that's each it. one teach one. And if you can pull one up, pull one up. You that's, know what I mean? And this go. man has taken off since then we, we we've been in similar circles we right. know a lot of the same people because we a1 that's it since day one yeah. they want us to discuss how each of us got our roles on the wire before you even go there let me tell you how this whole thing transpired from my view all right all right remember we both showed up for brown sugar we did and they was going to shoot that day right i was supposed to play some pseudo rapper and you was supposed to play i guess the puffy kind of character but you didn't like the dude's lines yes so Ooh. so clock hassan pardon me clock was like you know what fuck this i'm not doing the shit the nigga left to go do the audition for the wire me that also had that same audition but i said fuck that i'm, I'm gonna stay in here, here <laughs> and do brown sugar wow i love him you for know this what i'm right saying now, that's exactly i forgot that one and and this brother goes on to become wee babe yep. I All go right. on in this movie and end up on the cutting room floor and nobody <laughs> sees the scene unless they get the DVD. It's B-roll. It came around it came 360, right back though. Around, it though. did, though. Came right back it, around because that next season came and the auditions went out and Alexa Fogel. Yep. Shout, shout out, out to OG Alexa. That's right. Brought me in. And I auditioned. I remember because when I was walking out, Mr. Cheeks was coming in. Shout out to wow, Mr. Cheeks. Wow, Mr. Lost Cheeks. Boy. Right? And I had already worked with Alexa, so I was comfortable because I had worked with her for Oz. Oz, that's right. You right. I got a call back, and uh, the rest really was history. Me. You know what I mean? It was like um, I was dropping tour dates and all that because I knew the process, yes. and I respected the show so much yes. that there was nothing going to stop me from being you know, on this show. No this diva show. attitude, None nothing. I had a regular uh, honey wagon trailer, the little That's metal right. shit, metal That's all the way right. through. Uh, bullshit ass room. I mean, I did a lot. Talk about it humble, y'all. Humble. Talk about yes. humble. Yeah, my dude right here. And came ready to work. Yeah. So Always showed up. I mean, the most pre preparation was, I'm going to tell you what it was for me, because David made it clear how real these characters were, yeah. whether fictitious or not, yeah. right? Whether yeah. they embellished or not, right? a lot of them real right? people, yeah. He, yeah, he, that's what it was. So I, I think for me, I had like a civil duty not to let the community down. Mm. That's all in my mind mm. as far as preparation, because I didn't know, because I know Weebay existed yeah. in a sense or whatever. I yeah. don't know in what totality. So that's all I had to go off of was there's a community that I have to represent for. So I have to come forthright in that, tone and I'll be okay and it yeah. worked right yeah. Cause, I mean I don't think other than that I didn't know what I was doing I can't really speak for anybody else Facts. you know when you making history it's not like you're, you're, you're knowing just that on you're top doing of it, it. Yeah. Yeah. you know what I'm saying yeah, I yeah. just wanted to be on the paper not let you know remember my lines be humble be respectful yeah, yeah. you know that we had a job like seriously because you knew where this could go yeah even if you didn't know where it was going at the moment at in the time because you was part of the moment but right. you knew where it could go yeah, yes we we did know that and much. we definitely knew <laughs> I that think we much. had that much discipline all right so cheese was in prop Joe's crew we bay yeah. part of barksdale's operation right yeah. um 
which was Cap- both respected opp- yeah. one another though, right? Absolutely. It wasn't much, yeah. It wasn't, it wasn't no real until the Marlo the Cat Mar- came yeah, in to play, you, you know. Weebay was highly respected, especially for his loyalty. That, yep. that is true. Whereas yep. Cheese wasn't <laughs> well respected and eventually betrayed his whole family. He's an hey, asshole. He got it how he, he got, lived. He got it how he lived. <laughs> Cheese was a survivor. In, in Cheese's defense, at the end of the day, you know, money influences a lot of people's actions and he Decisions, just he wore right. yeah and he wore it on his sleeve i mean the man's name was cheese Gee, it was you know? I mean, come on it's a, like a triple entendre <laughs> <in that. laughs> from the money down to the funny you know what I'm Word, for real now in in the real world i don't think that cheese and Weebay could have ever been cool like that because the uh the morals were different it was and at like the time and in that era they probably wouldn't even cross past much unless for me to had to do something, something to, to you cheese. exactly was, yeah because exactly. if it wasn't on weebay's radar he wasn't concerned with it at if, all if, if avon or no one or stringer didn't put it on his radar he wasn't concerned with it one thing that stuck out about me right and this is another thing that people loved about Weebay, mm-hmm. the fish. Yeah, that was so dimensional, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. what I loved about it. David, again, brilliant for that. Yeah. Gave him more depth. And all the way down to that scene with D'Angelo and I pulling up, because I got to go out of town. Yeah. Right? We shot a, knock out, right. a narco D, right? Yeah. I didn't know how much, shout out to Larry Gilliard that played D'Angelo. Yeah. I didn't know how much he was giving it up in that scene because he was frightened that I was going to kill him because mm-hmm. I'm taking him to the, the, you know what I mean? The, the lineup yeah, was, it was, was creepy. Hey. It was creepy. And he gave it up. I didn't know till it aired, right? Because, I mean, we're there, we're filming. We got the spoilers, yeah. but not all the, the time, time. Yes. right? And yes. I saw it. I said, oh, that's what was going on because I'm behind him walking in the house, right? They I'm, probably gave him that note see? in the scene but didn't tell yeah, you. And that's what the great, the brilliant with filmmaking and these shows, that's the art right there. A Facts. good director would know to do that. These are my touches. We got Kimmy, Alex Aubrey, and Jezebel in here somewhere. I don't know if she thinks she's cute. You take two pinches of whatever food I got next to each tank. They set for the day. See? They ain't no problems. Just beautiful as hell, D. I, I had a moment, right, when I did Oz, where uh, mm-hmm. there was a scene where, and this was my introduction to it, there's a scene where I come into the visiting room mm-hmm. and I'm talking to Mum's character, yeah, the oh, poet yeah, guy. Shout out, Mums. And, uh, so peace. and the scene calls for me to take a shank from under the table, get up, and go stab Lord Jamal, who's uh, also in the visiting okay. room. And uh, Steve, Steve Bushimi yep. was directing it. Yep. So this is what Steve tells me, because I did it a couple of times. Okay. Routine. Boom, I'm thinking I'm killing it. Yeah. Grab the shank, <laughs> jump up, stab this man, get dragged <laughs> off, killing him. <laughs> so Steve comes up to me, he says, um, it's great, great work, you know. Yeah. Doesn't want to discourage me. He says, but you're pulling the shank out too fast. I mean, this is a visiting room. This uh, is your first time yeah, in here. Yeah. How are you finding that shank so fast? Okay. So um, I'll put it in perspective. He puts it into my mind. And I'm green still. This is like my first acting job, really. So action. I grab it again, go over there. No hesitation, <laughs> nothing. So Steve does something behind my back, doesn't tell me what. He goes to the um, prop guy and tells him, move it. Mm. Don't put it in the same place. He moves it. This is what I do. You got to look for it now. And he got the reaction he wanted to get. There you go. That's directing. Great directing that's right it. there. And, and that's all we want. We need instructions. That's how I am. I don't think, all I know is I don't know everything. Yeah. That's how I approach stuff to it. You know, I as love far it. as preparation is concerned, because you're learning the moment exactly what's going on. You could come with your lines fully memorized and everything doesn't matter until it all resonates it's, for yes, real. Yes. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. And that's what happened. It resonated. Yes, sir. So now we're getting to favorite scenes. We should both share our favorite scenes in the entire series, and it would be great to hear hear your favorite scene as we bay and explain why it's your favorite oh man to be prior to this question i did explain one of them when i had to go out of town and tell d'angelo to wash my fish because i didn't understand or, or realize how frightened he was that, that i would kill potentially him kill him and that was such a shocker at that time because D'Angelo was that you know how he fronted like he was the man. Yeah, he, he yeah. fronted like he was built for everything. everything. Yeah, like he was the smartest fucking piece on the chessboard. On the board. chessboard, yeah. he found out how he wasn't. So there we go, right? That's one of them. But then there's so many meth. Like, I, where do I start from first season on? When we were in the low rises and we pull up after I forgot Daniels or one of them got on to us about the code. 
the, mm. the wiretap when they really got on to us yeah, about the coding, the coding and, and the beat. Shit. And we had to pull up into the, and that was another slow-mo shot of us coming in, right? And then we had to rip the phones out. So yeah. they wouldn't be able to keep up and track it. Fire. Just for some reason that night, it was at night, it was a night shot, right? Yeah. We had like a 6 p.m. call time. Mm. So I got to sleep and rest all day, get up, energy. right eye, bushy <laughs> tail. Like, but it's a night scene, right? So I'm just like, it was just something so refreshing about that at that time. And then, I mean, it, it just goes down the line, the pit sandwich, the beef pit sandwich scene with Stinkum. Shout out mm, Stinkum before Stinkum mm, got, got killed. killed. Yeah, you know what I mean? And yeah. I'm telling them that, you know, they need to, we gonna open up shop somewhere on the east side or something like that. Damn, babe. How can you stand that shit with all that hot shit on it? Man, trick is not to give a fuck, boy. <laughs> I got this. <laughs> Nice. You know, I'm trying to dig into the crates of my, my mental Rolodex right yeah, now. Yeah, I, I feel you. <laughs> Yo, it's, but it's so many I like the, the relationship you two had, because We Bay wasn't above, you know, like, having a good time. But Stinkum, you couldn't even get a smile out this Yeah, I know man. Stinkum was a little <laughs> hard rock, hard tough. Hard rock. Like, yo, I know Bird loved this shit. Yeah, I wish yeah, he was right? here right now. <laughs> That's a good line, too. As far as Cheese, my favorite scene with Cheese would probably be when he, when he probably with um Robert Chu and, and Anwan. I was Lover. about to say Big G. Yeah, yeah I, I knew for it. Real, I knew you was gonna say that one. That know, was that was that was one. For one, they they welcome me with open arms. Yeah. And you know, G is a real one. Yes, like, he is. Real, That's real my bro. one. And That's Robert the bro. Chu, he you know he's a consummate professional plus acting coach. Yeah. When they let us ad lib on there, some of the funniest <laughs> dialogue would happen. <laughs> yes, I'm the guy that said, you know who got the best pussy and the fattest asses? <laughs> Midgets, nigga. Midgets. <laughs> Off the top. You know who got the fattest asses and the best pussy? Midgets, nigga. I'm with all that, you know what I'm saying? That's shit. But you should have heard the shit I was saying prior to that. Say like, right, that didn't make it. Didn't make it. Come on. Like if you pluck, <laughs> like if you pluck a roach off the wall, they go brain dead. Shit like that. I was saying all kind of. And that spot, which I don't know, is that spot that we filmed in Prop Joe's little office space had mad roaches in there. Yeah, man. and that's why that one was real. Nasty, that's how you nasty, know. nasty. Yeah. Was, oh, we were in the shits. Like, come yeah. on. Now. Yeah. They made sure yeah. where we were talk about on location because yeah. a lot of people act. They thought that was a Hollywood nah, set. Nah, B. I said no. No way that you guys saw what I saw and thought you that can't make Hollywood. that nope. that real. There's no way you could do that. No you can't way. get that no authenticity. I'm sorry. I mean, I love my where I come from, what I represent, my community, Hollywood, make some incredible films. Yeah. But you just don't get that feeling. They and, know. And I mean, and there's a lot of people that thought that. Yeah. I, I mean, mean, so that's a good and bad thing. My question is this. How do people respond to WeeBay, in your in your opinion? I mean, WeeBay's like a martyr of some sort, right? Except he didn't die. Right. You understand? Right. He, he he gave it up. He gave his life up or his freedom. Mm -hmm. that's, let's, let's, let's be more concise. Kept his integrity, though. Yes, and to keep his integrity, right? Yes. Yeah. So the people I meet, I mean, it's from all walks of life, for sure. So that lets me know how, you know, far that the show was able to reach folks. Because it, it doesn't matter where I am, who it is, but they love them, the, the loyalty. Mm. They, they let them know that's how family and loved ones are supposed to that. treat yes. each other. Yes. You know what I mean? Unconditionally. Yeah. Without judgment, mm. you know, and, and we is gonna ride to the to the wheels fall off. So that's the fanfare, the response, and the gratitude I got from people outside, young, old, whatever, brown, white, black, red, yellow, yeah. and 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 they and they love Weebay to the fullest just for the loyalty and just keeping it solid. But on a scale of you out in the streets when you step out your door. How did that reception feel? Like, did it? It. I, I'm All pretty right, sure so for it changed. Me, like, so I, cause you know, I watched you guys come up, do y'all yeah. thing, right? Y'all, you, but you guys were always stars to me. Salute. So when I went outside, and and once this, this started to catch on, like I had to get reminded every time someone says something. Mm. I'm not Weebay. I'm Hassan. Right. So I'm not that. I'm not wearing that anymore as much. But I'm getting constantly reminded, which is like it's refreshing because I'm like, oh, oh yeah, that. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, Absolutely. You know what I mean? Absolutely. It, it take, I'm taking it back every time. So I think it works for me and my personality because. I'm able to say, okay, I'm, I'm able to be down to earth in the moment, mm. then understand that, oh, I'm a consumer as well. Nice. So I see and understand what, what you guys saw. Yeah. So then that's the connection between myself and people in the street for WeeBay as a representative, right? That's, that's a, forever still, in a day, though. Like, still. just to really put the overall in a nutshell. Yeah. It's, it's, it's all the time everywhere. And 
it, it was funny for a while, and I had to adjust to it. Like, you know what? I just did a hell of a job as a representation yeah. for what that character was, and then I just that's that, accepted it. That's a testament it. to your yeah, work you right there, you know? That. Yeah. Even I had a free Wee Bay shirt. Stop playing Come with on, me, man. man. Free Wee Bay. Tell free please. Bay. Tell them. Free Bay, nigga. <laughs> free Bay. <laughs> All right. Any, any funny stories? Because I remember talking to the guy that plays Chris, Banger, and uh, he said, you know, playing Chris Parlo, was was weird for him because he had dudes coming up to him in the street like, yo, you need some work in, you oh, know, I yeah, got you, yeah. blah, blah. I, all right, so two for me, <laughs> two for me on Let's probably go. two ends of the spectrum. One guy, I guess, came home from doing a long bit in jail, mm -hmm. thinking about maybe close to 20 years. He Jeez. said it was at Mag one of Magic's parties down by the beach in Santa Monica, right, Venice? Yeah. One of his uh, summer parties in L.A., and the guy broke down, he was with his wife. Mm -hmm. And he broke down like, you know, WeeBay was such, you know, inspiration for me, man. Let me know that there's still real solid dudes out there like that. Nice. I, I got betrayed in jail because of guys that's opposite of what he stood for and represented. So I just had to say thank you. That got me through. But he broke down and I'm right. just walking into the function. I'm trying to like, do my little charge yeah, party. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you like, you yeah, messed yeah. the vibe <laughs> up a little sad. I got to get a drink faster than I was anticipating getting right. a drink. Right, right. But he probably was waiting for that moment yeah because he was on life. he was leaving actually yeah. they were so they were cutting out early and bumped into me and that yes. was his testimony and then i was somewhere else and i think it was in like the dmv area and one yeah. gentleman offered me his wife yeah. like, you're yeah. the yeah. only guy that i give her a hall <laughs> pass with oh i always think thank you but no <laughs> thank you <laughs> he said, thank you, TMI, little TMI. Yo, I love that but right okay. there, man. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody really called me cheese. They still call me meth, you know what I mean? Because right. that, by that time, the, 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 the series had already had wheels, you know? So this was just Method Man in the series. I, I didn't really add anything to it. I wanted to. But there was not much that Cheese could do in the capacity that he was in, except, you know, just basically try and get money. That didn't come till later on. Yeah, when that's I, a good you know, like, You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. See, I didn't know. I was scared for the show. Right. And I'm sure there were some rough patches behind the scenes that we just don't know that had to get the show pushed to the next level. But I was scared, probably rightfully so, because... Because you saw the process. Yeah, and yeah. they trying to convey this message that people don't... This conversation and dialogue people don't want to talk, talk about, about right about. now. Yeah. It's uncomfortable. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it was graphic. So I was just like, mm, I don't know. So there was that one foot in and out about the art we were making. Right. Like, it's good, but it might go over people's heads. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I'm glad you said that because when the second season rolled in, and I believe they started doing the docks. The docks, that's right, with the Greeks. But what people didn't understand was you're talking about Baltimore as a whole. Yes. You cannot tell the story of Baltimore without, without the those harbor. docks. There you go, Come without on. the harbor. You have to tell that story. So this is... Ed, David, and Nina yes. staying true to form, staying yes. true to, to the community That's of Baltimore, right. regardless to how the street people felt about it or yes. how the police, the politicians, the the politicians it, yes, however yes. they felt yes, about it. Yes. It, it, it. It had a, a certain pattern to it. And then the third was Marlowe yep. coming into the game yep. and uh, the change of power as yes. well as the politicians. The power the shift. change of power as far as politicians, too. So Corsetti that was another thing. and everything. Yes. You know? And I had, he was British. That one was British. Yeah, yeah that's, that's Aiden. Um, yeah, from, from top, you know, fucking everything. Game of Thrones <laughs> yeah, and all that's that my shit. God. But I'm like, well, this nigga yeah, British? Like, he's big. Because he did one hell of a job. He did. He, he did. came in hot. You know who I like? Lance. <laughs> Lance, who, oh, who no one really gives Lance his, his props. You know, bald headed, smooth skinned, <laughs> pretty black man. Like, yeah, yeah, what? Yeah. And was smashing the, uh, the little prosecutor lady. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Like, yeah. he held it down for years, man. He and he did. was he was good at what he did. Yeah. I got to give Lance you know his I mean? flowers. And then we had, wait, we had third season, then the fourth season was the kids. The now, that was the kids, system. right, exactly. And then the fifth season was, so, you know like what, you let said, it all go. So like you said, there was no way to tell the whole story of right. Baltimore because just for that, those simple nuances... I don't eat lump crab cake anywhere else in the country. If I'm not in Baltimore, I don't I don't eat crab you know, really. You know. Yeah, what you know that is that's the, the that cap. is the grit. That's talk the Talk about it. You understand? Talk about it. And in the fifth <clears throat> season, which I, I loved. It, it had to deal with the newspaper. And this was basically David Simon's 
baby. Yeah. Because that's where he comes from. He yeah. comes from that world. Clark Johnson. He played Gus. Oh, yeah, yeah. Brilliant. Yeah, yeah. Not only was he directing some of the... Because he directed a couple of my the episodes. The pilot. Yes. He, he, Clark he, was from the jump. Clark, he was in the freaking... The series. I think he was portraying David, in a sense, David Simon's yeah. character. But there was another character who played uh, a character named Templeton. Templeton. Played by Tom McCarthy. Okay. Who is an award-winning director and writer now. Now. Okay. Right. He probably was the then, evolution. but they... Yes. The evolution. And uh, it's funny because... I had to have a sit-down to do a movie called The Cobbler. Mm -hmm. I go to meet the director to have a sit You know, sometimes you have a sit-down yeah. lunch with the director, especially mm -hmm. if they're interested in casting you. Mm -hmm. And it's Templeton, the piece of shit journalist <laughs> from... And, and you know, yep. he was like, I was like, I know you. you you're that piece, piece of shit, shit. journalist. <laughs> and he was like, and you're that piece of shit cheese. <laughs> yeah. Loved him Brought from that nephew. day. Nah, Loved that, him from yeah. that day on. But, but speaking of that, it's like the connections we've made with... Uh, People that we wouldn't have known if we hadn't had this experience, otherwise, you know. Otherwise, um, otherwise. Nina is a friend. Yeah. David is a friend. Yeah. I mean, Michael K., who I met there, friend, R.I.P. to the God. Yeah. Uh, just, you know, me and God. Snoop still stay in contact. Yeah. You know, Absolutely. I run into Dom. It's all love. I yeah. run into Wendell. He's a wild boy. Yeah, Wendell's a wild Always boy. Always love. Know, keep it yes, solid. Yes, keep it solid, <laughs> you know. All right, so both our characters were fathers to middle school characters yeah. who appeared in season four. Would you like to talk about Weebay's, you know, being Naaman's father? I wouldn't say it extended his story. His, his story was going to be extended any motherfucker. Yeah, way because, it was just a, a yeah. dimension or a layer to yeah. peel back. Yeah, That's and, all. and it was and just as far as cheese, it was never addressed that I was Randy's father or his brother uh -huh. or, or however. But what was interesting to me is that you and Sandy McCree, I believe. Yep, Sandy McCree. You guys the came Londa. up with a backstory for Bay. Yes. Can you tell that? The, the line, the, so it, it, it was where Sandy's great too, right? And she just was where, you know, Haas, we got to, you know, convey this message to him that I was harder on this boy than you actually were. Mm. You know, I'm at peace with who my son was in my mind, and I know if he's not built, he's not built. built right. And if he is, he is, and time would always tell. I mean, you send Naaman out on them corners now, I'm giving him maybe one, two years before you down the morgue. And maybe, if you're lucky, up here with you. Maybe, maybe not. That's the game. I'm talking about naming him, Mr. Bryce. He's a lot of things, a lot of good things. I mean, before you know, he might surprise all of us given half a chance, but he ain't made for them corners, man. I mean, not like we were. That's why I come down here, because I gotta believe that you see it. Being who you are and, and, and all you've been through. You know your son. in your hand, man. You asking too much. Yeah. But I'm asking. In the scene where Robert Wisdom's character, Bunny Colvin, talks to Bay in jail about Naaman's future. There we go. I would love to hear your thoughts on, on Bay's understanding that his son didn't have to follow in his footsteps and could have opportunities that weren't available to him. Yeah, because he was compassionate enough. That's what it is. See, and needless to say, we know some of the same people. We grew up yeah. with some of them type of folks. Yeah. And they're some of the funniest people, some of the most compassionate people. Right. You know, but they do what they got to do. They'll murder you. Yeah, they'll, they'll kill you. All right, that's what I'm you. trying to say, but they'll, they'll kill, kill you. you. <laughs> yeah, they'll kill you. So that was just it. It was one thing didn't have to do with the other yeah. with Wee Bay. Yeah. He, you know what I mean? Didn't ride that fence. So, you know, his decision-making didn't regret nothing. For her, it was legacy, I believe, more than it, anything it was. else. Like, this is what your father did, so yes. you was made for this, this and yes. you got to take care of me. Yes. And but that's he what not the, here, you got to step up and take care of me, because it's still that what about and, me. And I'm trying to tell her that, yeah, he's not your husband. Right. That's your son. You right. going to let him go. go let there him go. go. And she felt that, entitled. But to have that conversation with a man that's telling you, like, your son was meant for something else. Yeah. Right. Like, you already knowing that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yes. Like, and, 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 and in Weebay's eyes, it's more or less like, that is the legacy. That is the legacy, you right? You know what I mean? But it's just he has with, to yes. make the Londa. Yes, understand Understand it. that yes. shit, Yes, man. there you go. See? 
the things that y'all don't see as far as the why it goes is like the behind the scenes stuff. What's some funny behind the scenes things that may have happened on set? I mean, you worked with Idris, you worked with Dom, you know. You've oh, been around man. some good ones. I know. Dom, Dom, not to Dom, mention Wood. Uh, no, yeah, Wood, Dominic, right? There was some funny nights, some hangout nights, or plenty of club nights yeah. where uh, <laughs> some, yeah. some dastardly things <laughs> happened. But I'm going to tell you that the universe, this is how you knew that we were God's favorites and we were chosen because no matter how dastardly of the things, no matter how much school duggery took yeah, place, yeah. we all made it set safe and sound that Monday morning. Nice. I don't care what <laughs> took place from Friday night to Sunday. We, we were made safe it. After that. Everybody made their call times. <laughs> Thank the Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Let's say that. All right. Who did we think was watching the show? It, it was, was, I was surprising who I found out was watching the show. Right. Like, like the middle of America there for you real, go, right? Yes, those people. And then it was like even us, like being in Staten Island, I go to the mall. Mm-hmm. And I, because you know me, because my mom used to love Macy's. Mom loves Macy's. Yeah, everybody right? loves So yeah. I always park in Macy's and I walk through. <laughs> so you go through the cosmetics. Session, yeah, yeah, and then it was some of the the women, the sales women, are say, yeah. "I know you in white we bay," and I'm like, "What? The mob wives is yeah. on it? Oh, let's go! <laughs> <laughs> let's go!" And what about uh, you know, like our closest friends? They were there with us for the journey, but like you know, people. They're associates, people from the island and shit. You may yeah. run into them randomly and see yeah. me since you was a little kid. I know, personally for me, when people haven't seen me since I was a little kid and they see me now, I like the feeling I get because it's like, this that's what I was, this is where right, I am man, now. Yeah, you, and you see the, the difference. You can see, you, you know the shit. Yeah, yeah, come on. And to see the light in their eyes from seeing me yeah. and me knowing that I knew them from a time well, it keeps me grounded. Yeah, there you go. You know what I'm saying? It keeps me yeah, grounded. Like, this, this is where I'm from. Absolutely. And some of those people are still there, but are they unhappy? Maybe. Maybe. that we, We've we we've had un, uh, unhappy times, but yeah. there are some happy times, too, because yeah. when I was young, growing up in those environments, I knew we were broke. Yeah. But everybody around us was broke, too. Right. You know what I mean? Right. And uh, we found ways to have fun. Right. And ha- found ways to be happy. That's right. Facts. Who do we think the show's audience was? I mean, the hood. Well, because, I mean, we represented that struggle yeah. in the hood, and that's yeah. where rappers and the expression comes from. So it had to resonate with the rappers and stuff. And, yeah, it's timeless. Yeah, it makes I mean, it timeless in that it, sense. It felt good to know that, you know, if, even if everybody wasn't paying attention, you know, there was a certain audience that was paying attention. And if... Nobody want to admit it. Right. I'm going to tell it here that hip-hop pushes the culture forward, period. period. Whatever culture it is, rock and roll, everything, fashion, we push it forward. So start to recognize. Like, the why is a prerequisite now for hip-hop. Yeah, it is. You can't really almost be an artist and, and represent and speak for that community and that expression and, and can't identify with right. the wire. Right. Like, you're right. almost cheating. See, and the thing about it is hip-hop, we own the good and the bad. We're not right. afraid to own the good there and the go. bad. There we take it all. That's a good one. But you'd be surprised, like we said, we once we found out that it was the the middle of America, the the suburban life, the you know the housewives tuning in. Yeah. It, you know, it was it started ringing bells. It rang its bells, and it, that you just couldn't do nothing about it. Nothing at all. <laughs> I, I love I love the the heavy Staten Island representation. Staten Island. You know, yeah. on, on the wide, even Belly. I mean, you had yeah. me, Haas, Power. Yeah. A few of us running around there and stuff. But, you know, right. it was amazing to see how broad the audience was. Yeah. And then even more of a, a, a shocker to, to know that this show wasn't nominated. I mean, for a show not to be nominated for any awards or anything, some of your favorite actors have come. Uh, yes. Speaking Idris, you yes. know, just 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 to name one. Yeah. You know, Jamie Hector is still working. Jamie um, Hector, Bosch, uh, every oh, we own the city. We right own now, the city. Right? Banga, I, I I don't know when Banga doesn't work. You know what I mean? He he <laughs> keeps a job. He's on. He's actually on power yeah, now. Yeah. Um, and just you know, they they keep that circle of people like Scorsese does yes. with certain actors. Yes. They're in all of his yes. movies, certain That's Italian right. guys he knows he can well, trust. Well, because you them. know what you're going to get. There yeah. you go. It's you the trust, trust factor. These trust guys them. are professional. 
they're coming to deliver. They know their lines. Yeah. They're humble. Yeah. They're great to work with. And and I think we set the precedent for that now. You know that right. that that speaks volumes and words gets around. And I for you to have a thirty principal cast, yeah. like that's what the thing with the wire two was. It's like it was thirty main characters. Thirty main characters. Like where, where the hell else do you even get with, that? With storylines. Yeah, with storylines. With, with story story bro, you shot Kima, bro, and Shaquima. we need to talk about how it felt to know that you was one of the top rated. <laughs> <laughs> memes out there, yeah. my guy. Oh, man. Come when that, on. And when that started, I said, all right, people get it for real. Because now the younger folks don't even know. They can't even correlate it. I see them, and they'll just be like, oh, oh you're the, the meme, meme guy. guy. <laughs> yep, that's right. <laughs> then some of them got time for the education. Mm. Some of them, it's like, you know how it is when you're with your friends, and they'll just, okay, yeah, good. All right, OG, go ahead. But then someone else would be like, and then I'm like, yeah, from the show The Wire. You should yeah. check that out, HBO. And then Very, they go, what? Wow, yeah, and then yeah. they're like, oh, well, right, they want that tidbit. What's the the coldest Wire gift that I've seen? Let me see. Um, Omar's coming. That's the that's the one yeah, that, that I, that I see now. I see that one all the time. Yeah, that's gotta be too. Omar yeah. coming, and that mm -hmm. was one of the coldest shits right there. He wasn't he, he wasn't even paying attention. Went and stood and stood up underneath the spot like this, and the package dropped on the ground. Which next I to don't him. understand though. Let's really tell it like it is. That was in the middle of the summer in Baltimore, Maryland. Michael K. Williams in a trench coat, coat yeah. do rag, and ain't breaking a sweat, sweat yeah. though. That's what I'm saying. I don't think nobody would have been able to do that. I'm on, so I'm dripping. Man. I'm like, I got to get undressed in between every take. I wouldn't have been able to do <laughs> There's no way. And he's just playing yeah, it cool yeah. as ice like that. Yes, How uh, you know it was meant yeah, to be? Yeah, It was meant to be. You right about that, though, now that I think 80, about it. 85 degrees. Sweat. Mike ain't sweat. Man. He might have had a, a day or two, but Mike really. It, it, full character, ready to go. Dope as hell. Mm -hmm. Dope as hell. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How do you think The Wire would do now? And I don't mean as far as the show. I mean as far as streaming services go. I think that there's no way it could not be nominated. Right. For, especially getting to the number of people that streaming services. And but the why is now. the reason why things are even getting the recognition it's yeah. getting now, right? Yeah. So it would have to be unbiased in yeah. the, in today's environment. Right. And it definitely would, I think, stand tall as much as it is on this. Maybe as far we can as get this. a posthumous and yeah, something, something like that. Posthumous. Honorary. Yeah, honorary. You know, what I mean? <laughs> you know? <laughs> something like that. You get something for the people. You know what I mean? And uh act, they they act, they act actually have a new show. Uh, we own the city. We own the city, right. Yeah. Yeah, Jamie's on there. Jamie's Trey, on, Jamie. Yes. Uh, is JD in it? Jay Darrell's on there. That, that, yeah. Darryl. Uh, but contrary to what y'all think and shit, uh, JD, uh, Bodie's character was not killed by Michael. A lot of people thought that Michael killed him. No. Darryl yeah, actually that, killed him. Yes, that's it. That is Darryl, killed Darryl him. killed that, him. Yeah, that is. The guy is. that was on the crutches the whole season yep. complaining and shit. Yeah. Yep. He did it. Yeah. Because Kennard killed... Omar, uh, Omar, right, and everybody. And that's another one, man. <laughs> Come on, Shorty, like, well, whether people know it or not, and I got this story from David, like, when that scene happened where he shot Omar, yeah. like, Shorty really broke down. Like, he was, they had to. No, that's right. They I had to walk him that. off and yeah, then have like somebody talk to him. he had to really, to like, him. decompose yeah. because yeah. in his mind, he really shot Omar. Omar yeah. So he even understand the validity mm -hmm. of the character, the importance of who Omar was to the story and everything like that to I be responsible right. for seeing uh, him go. Right. Because he that was, part. like, immortal. And he was overwhelmed by that. I can imagine. That's, you know, the kids that were on the show did a hell of a job, too. You they, know? They, they carried it. They, they did. definitely carried it and shit. They did. I think people, even though they loved Michael's character on The Wire, when he killed Snoop, even though they knew Snoop was going to kill him and he was a right. beloved character, right. they were mad at Michael. They were, but she super but, mad. But she went out in that scene like a trooper, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, and that was it was such a respect between the two at the. That's what I was able to get over because I was upset for a second too. Yeah, but I, I was. But I was able to get I over was. it because I understood it. Had it. to happen. I had to happen. What now, motherfucker? You shy? Smart nigga. You always was. How you know? Y'all taught me. Get there early. Speaking of that, the night Stinkum got killed. Now, that whole scene right there, bro, y'all, like, for one, y'all killed it. For two, you had the, the presence of mind to know that one leg ain't working, 
you damn near out of bullets. <laughs> bullets right? And this crazy nigga is whistling a hunting we will go. Your facial expression when you was laying near that wheel and What's you going heard that on nigga right now? whistling. I said, huh? That was a real <laughs> ass yeah, moment. See, that was Wee Bay. That was a you saw a fright in Wee Bay. Like right. but then those are, it's that fright or flight, like the, the syndrome, right? Because he was calculating. Fight up or to flight. That point. So even when he got shot, he was still calculating. He was Let still me get out the way. I was Check my shit. Yes. Right. Wee Bay's a survivor. Right. So that's what you saw, that survival come over his <laughs> That survival expression mm -hmm. kicked in in mm -hmm. that time. And then hence, that was just a great scene. And then he still had the presence of mind. Once you hear the popo, clicked him right back in the, into what he was supposed yep. to do. Nope. Got rid of the gun, gun which was down the, the talking drain. point in the beginning. Like, yes, Bird Pringer Prince was all over that bird. Yep, Make, sure you get go. Right. Make sure you get rid of that shit once yep. we done. Nigga got rid of that joint and limped Oh, nigga. Yep. Uh, 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 insane. Yeah, but I said, wow, I did look like insane. I was Insane. Come oh, on. Yes, you did. Yeah, did yes, that. you did. did then, then they had my man on the crutches, and he's still ready to put in work. <laughs> Come on. I got the cheese fries, yo. Come on, Came man. Came back with the cheese Come fries in the crutches. Is in the nick of time, save my man Avon. And then the damn the interrogation <laughs> scene, bro. It's like you just taking murders like Monopoly chips. But as to murders, you might as well give them what you have. Because anything you leave out is outside the deal. If they learn about it later, they can charge you later. Fuck it then. For another piss sandwich and some tater salad. I'll go a few more. You want that? Medium rail out of horseradish. That was the earliest call time I ever had. Mm. It was 6 a.m. Yes. So I'm hungry. Yeah. And they dope. keep reloading on hit that's... beef sandwiches. So that's why it looked real. Because it, it was like, yeah, bring me another. <laughs> Garçon, bring me another pit because I'm hungry. It's 6 in the morning, man. I love that right there. See, and, <laughs> yeah. and, I kinda, and that kind of inspired me on something I did on Blue Bloods where the scene was over and they were leaving. And I asked, I was like, bring me a bottle of water or something. Uh-huh. Just so I could be comfortable in this motherfucker. And it struck me as a, a, a Weebay thing to do. It's a weebay you know what I mean? right? A Weebay-esque yeah. thing to do. Uh -huh. Man, all I could say is that when your character can go past just the show, that's when you know you've done something. YouTube is killing it right now. Cause yeah. I could just I mean, I just watched the whole video of all the all the killings. And I'm talking about not just main characters, but People that wasn't even considered. Shit, they, right? they, they was showing their deaths and shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, Background killers. I, I just, <laughs> I just, you know, the way I feel about the show today, you could just tell that it, it, it's like someone that was raising a baby and, and they wanted the best for this child. And, yeah. You know, those first five years, they were just so, you know, on it, on it, on yeah. it, making sure that child was fed, making sure that child had clothes on his back, making yes. sure it was there for that child's first steps. Yes. All the way up All to the, the time when that child first went to school. Yeah, I, I, I don't know really at what point where it catapulted to this, like, timeless, you know, remarkable, like, you know, yeah. top of the top notch yeah. shows ever. Just and, and just to be a part of something like that, because up to that point, you know, music for me was the, was the biggest outlet. Yeah. But um, just being a part of that, I, I can say that it shaped me into the performer I am today. Definitely. Uh, my professionalism and my humbleness. Definitely. Said. You you one of the top notch living that. examples because y'all you came in the game. And I always tell people when they ask about our history, I said, see, for meth with me, mm -hmm. it, it, Shaquan mm -hmm. was always special. I seen it when you used to be outside on Tarzi Street, and it'll be you and you guard at the Chinese restaurant. Right, It'll man. be beatboxing. <laughs> yeah. You'll be freestyling. For sure. Remember He's the first songs. time I heard that shit one night, because it was one of them weekends I get to stay out late. Mm. Mm -hmm. You know, my peoples used to be, I, I was one His of them weekends. His peoples ain't played, Yeah, I was one of them weekends I got to stay about? out late. <laughs> and I was like, oh, that's what y'all be doing? Yeah. Hey, bust that shit. Do that shit again. That shit sound fresh. I knew, I knew it. I knew it right there. Word, and man. then Poppy came to the clean ring bing. I remember y'all came. I sing to the ring ring bing. Y'all shot the protect your neck video. I remember that day. He like, oh yeah, Meth and them doing that. Um, yeah, that met that that protect your neck video down yeah, the street. Yeah, man. I was like, oh, they shooting the shit. They doing it for real. It's going down. 
Word. Yo, we don't understand how happy we was when the Wu got on. We thought they were shorties, but they was worse than us, man. Yeah, man. These dudes was worse than us, man, but we ain't going to go down <laughs> yeah, that road and shit. That's another day in time. Yo, Clock, man, many yeah, man. more blessings your way. Back I know that you. there's, you know, more jobs out there That's waiting right. for cats like yourself, That's man. Right. It's like you're that kind of cat where it's like, we need somebody for this. Who's the go-to guy? I'm right here. I Get go. MacGyver. There you <laughs> yeah. go. Beat, beat me. I got hit me on the hip. <laughs> Only one person can do this yeah. job. <laughs> yeah, right? MacGyver. Ah, oh, that was the and, shit. And um, anything I do, you on the short list. Please believe that oh, shit. Oh, I already know, brother. Yes, sir. Good graces and likewise back at you, man. Love you like cook food. Yes, sir. And speaking of that, our daughters. Yes. Cheyenne and Audie Love. Audie Love. Audie, Audie, Love, Audie, Audie, Audie. <laughs> Been besties. Since high school, and that's organic because we, yeah, you know, we didn't make on no, no it wasn't, introductions. Nah, it wasn't none of that. And look, you know, your dads grew up together right. and, and shit, so right. it's only right that right. you carry on. <laughs> Without any history, they found each other, so that speaks volumes that to does. our that does. relationship that and does. how the whole family dichotomy works as far as that's Staten right. Island goes. It goes just be, it goes beyond blood family. Yes, it does. And I can honestly say this man is my family, and that's I'm always right. rooting for. Him. Likewise, if I could have seen back then when I was playing with your Transformers how I know if we just how? even knew I, I don't know man we we had no clue we would have hug out way more yeah Shit. we would have <laughs> tagging so along much, where y'all going so after much. this you and each leader house where y'all going so after much this so much we could have taught each other for I, real I know, bro I oh know. man why your 20th anniversary y'all and I mean hey that's that we bay did a ton of dirt but the fact that he's so iconic is a credit to Hassan's work. He took what was on the page and brought Weebay to life. Salute to you, sir. I'm proud of what that man has accomplished and proud to call him family. Next week on The Wire at 20. There were a couple of cops like, hey, let me show off for this Hollywood dude and rousing people and shit. And I, I was like, man, you, you don't need to do that. She told me it's for a character named Bubbles and I went off. I just went off. I was like, what the fuck is that? I mean, are you taking me serious? I'm a fucking best man. I, I don't know, man. I don't, you know, I don't know if this thing is going to get picked up. You know, it's a little too, uh, a little too crazy. The air that we were breathing was sort of unpredictability and precariousness. It's in the stories, it's in the characters' lives, and it was in our lives, too. Now, if you like what you heard, you know what to do. Subscribe. And don't forget that all seasons of The Wire are on HBO Max. So go watch them, man, like right now. The Wire at 20 podcast is a production of HBO and Campside Media. This episode was produced by Cliff Method Man Smith, Shauna Gar, and Natalia Winkleman. Julian Kimball is our story editor. Our associate producer is Lily Houston Smith. Fact checking by Aaliyah Papes. At Campside Media, our executive producer is Josh Dean. Editing and sound design by Rod Sherwood and David Devereaux. Music by the Neville Brothers. Love those guys. Thanks for listening. See you next time.